Hi right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the end times, it is a Monday. It is the 4th of July. Alright. It is July 4th, 2022. Happy birthday, America. Happy birthday to the uh, declining and falling empire. So while, uh, you know, millions and millions of Americans are out uh, grilling their various uh, beef hamburgers, beef brisket barbecue, beef ribs, and beef hot dogs, and beef whatever. A little dog and I, we just celebrated the 4th of July by eating some good old American bush meat. I want to thank Sandy Shellis for the delicious uh, venison. And I want to thank uh, my good buddy River Hermit for these delicious peppers. So I made some uh, venison stuffed peppers and enjoyed my own American bush meat. Uh, my fellow earthling did not die in vain. <clears throat> so, anywho, speaking of fellow earthlings dying in vain or not, you know, I love to uh, wake up to these stories, uh, you know, about these big game hunters who, uh, well, as Rob was saying, the stories are a lot more fun when an elephant or a rhino or a lion or whatever kills the hunter directly. But uh, this one, uh, this one's pretty good karma at work too. <clears throat> this is coming out of South Africa today where a wildlife trophy hunter is shot in cold blood next to his car probably can't see this with all of this glare. I doubt you can see this is a picture of this clueless fucking moron uh, where he had just shot a an elephant standing over a dead elephant with his AR-15 or whatever. So anyway, uh, let's send out a fond farewell to Rian Nalday age 55, 55 years of killing his fellow earthlings, finally paid off. <clears throat> a wildlife trophy hunter who killed elephants and lions and uploaded photos of himself next to their carcasses has been shot dead in South Africa. Rian Naudi, age 55, was gunned down at close range when a car pulled up next to his truck in Limpopo, an area which includes part of the Kruger National Park Wildlife Reserve. Uh, a spokesman for the South African National Police Force said, the man was lying with his face up and there was blood on his head and his face. So I guess his face was not on his head, according to this police spokesperson. <clears throat> A pair of hunting rifles, clothes, water, whiskey, and pajamas were found by the officers. Uh, the Heritage Protection Group a non-profit group against rhino poaching claimed there are two suspects involved in the hunter's murder. Yes. Uh, so they stole his pistol. They stole his pistol and left two rifles lying uh, in there. Mr. Naude ran the Pro Hunt Africa, the Pro Hunt Africa firm, which he called, quote, a hunting and eco safari outfit. There you go, in uh, South Africa, an eco 
safari outfit called Pro Hunt Africa. So, uh, we're just going to read the one comment they have. There's 19, there's 16 comments. Here is DJ. I don't believe in murder, but in this case, I think it's just fine. Nine thumbs up. We're going to give that two thumbs up. I mean, ten thumbs up. And uh, two thumbs down. But anyway, this all got me to thinking about something that happened uh, right here yesterday that got uh, several comments where I just kind of mentioned in passing <clears throat> yesterday that uh, I actually had a five-year-old boy <laughs> spending the weekend here at the hip camp with his mother and she asked if I could teach her son how to go fishing. That the young man, he lives in a fourth floor condo and uh, so I offered my services. I'm not much of a fisherman. I, good lord, I have pretty much, I pretty much stopped fishing about 20 years ago, mainly because I, I hate cleaning the fish. Yuck. I, I, anyway, so even though I haven't been fishing in about 20 years, I had some vague memory of it, so I mentioned in passing yesterday that I was, uh, while she was up shopping at Walmart for a fishing pole, uh, I mentioned <clears throat> at the end of my rant about Donald Trump that I was going to teach a five-year-old uh, to go fishing, and I highly suggested that anybody teach any five-year-old in their life to, uh, to, to fish and to garden, and this is the uh, response I got from my buddy Mark J. And the, what I really respect about uh, Brother Mark, who I consider one of my lieutenants, of course, Mark is a steadfast but not a militant vegan. Uh, and, and, and Mark, what he understands is the difference between righteousness and self-righteousness. I have never heard a self-righteous comment out of this man's mouth. He is righteous, which is a good thing. He speaks his truth and he sticks to it. He uh, speaks his truth. He defends it to anybody he doesn't care, who doesn't agree with him. This is my truth and, and I am speaking truth uh, I guess speaking truth to power. I don't know. He might not agree, Mark. I don't guess. I don't know if you would say speaking truth to carnivores such as myself is probably uh, speaking truth to unevolved clueless morons. So this was uh, Mark J's first comment about the best thing you could teach a five-year-old is how to fish. Going in to the future of five-year-olds. <clears throat> the best thing that you could teach a five-year-old is that fishing is a cruel sport. A fish has more nerves in and around its mouth than we do. Imagine a fish having a barb jammed into its mouth and being dragged into the air to drown. Imagine yourself having a barb jammed into your mouth and being dragged into the water to drown. And my response to that was, yes, like most things, the answer to a question depends on whom you ask. I imagine a shark's advice to their five-year-olds would read a little differently. And Mark's uh, response to that was, a shark cannot advise a five-year-old shark, and a shark cannot behave other than how it was made to behave. It hasn't any choice. A shark 
has not any conception of the pain that it inflicts when its incisor teeth, when its incisors tear into flesh. Humans, unlike a shark, have that awareness, or at least some do. You notice he did not say some of us holier than thou vegans do. That is the difference between a righteous statement. Most vegans could not have stopped where Mark did. Uh, and they would have said, or at least some like us uh, evolved, spiritually evolved vegans do. Uh, Mark, you notice, does not do that, which is what makes this comment a righteous comment instead of a self-righteous comment. <clears throat> and they have a choice, meaning humans have a choice, to inflict pain or not inflict pain. A truly empathetic human will not unnecessarily inflict pain on anything. A shark is not capable of having empathy. Saying that the answer to a question depends upon whom you ask is like saying that the truth does not exist. It does exist on any subject. Is one capable of recognizing the truth when he hears it? Is one receptive to the truth? Is one capable of accepting it and living it? Those are the questions that people need to ask themselves. For the vast majority of people, the answer to those questions is no. So my response to Mark was telling this story uh, kind of ties in to the elephant hunter, I guess. Not, not, quite, uh, not quite to that level. So anyway, what happened yesterday, so I'm, you know, I'm teaching this five-year-old <clears throat> to go fishing. And, you know, here in our pond, which I stocked with uh, catfish last year, I stocked the pond with 30 catfish. So, uh, <clears throat> he was, you know, he's there with his mother, with his little haughty mother. They're from Brazil is where they're, is where she is from anyway. So we're there and the kid catches a catfish. So he catches the catfish and I get him to reel it in and everyone, and he, you know, he's so excited. And so his mother, you know, is kind of hovering over them like mothers do. And the little kid was so excited about catching his very first fish of his entire life at age five he jumped he literally jumped with joy and the top of his little uh, clueless head goes bam and smashes right under the chin uh, of his mother who uh, and, and that collision caused his mother to uh, bite the inside of her lower lip. These are the 4th of July, clueless moron, ORB is coming by. So his mother, while the fish is dangling by its mouth off the hook, the, the kid smashes into his mother's face. I mean, she bites her lip hard, guys. I mean, hard. Uh, and and uh, she screams, watch what you're doing. You hurt my mouth. It hurts like hell. And, and I mean, there was blood coming out of the corners of her mouth. I mean, she, well, and she showed me the inside of her lip where uh, she had bitten through it. I remember because I had a diving board accident one time where I didn't, diving backwards and I about bit my lower lip off I mean lips bleed like hell and uh, so anyway I was standing there wondering should I point out the uh, irony of the situation I I wisely kept my mouth shut and I think it's safe to say the uh, little hottie did not recognize the irony of her of her uh, wounded 
bloody mouth while uh, we were uh, while that catfish was dangling off the hook. And then, of course, if you've ever you know gotten a catfish off the hook, you know how easy it is to stab yourself in the ball of your thumb with that spine. Somehow we managed not to stab the kid in the thing, and somehow he managed to make it through the morning without impaling himself or his mother uh, on the hook. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> we did catch three fish, and we put them all back in the pond. So they're swimming around in the pond now, and we'll see if they ever bite another worm again. But uh, anyway, I want to... Uh, I always appreciate hearing from Mark J. And uh, anyway, teach your five-year-old whatever you think is best to teach your five-year-old. Uh, and with that, I'm going to wrap up this little Fourth of July rant. And uh, good Lord. What are we going to do on the 4th of July? I think we're going to go harvest some columbine seeds on the 4th of July. Get out there and uh, harvest some seeds while you still can on the 4th of July. Bye, guys.